Hey everyone, welcome to another video and in this video I'm going to be building out a local notification mini app and in the app we can tap create to create a custom local notification with a title we want and also set a specific time it's going to repeat on daily and if we tap create it's going to be added to a list at the top here and if we background the app and wait until that time we're going to see the local notification appear at the top if we tap that it will take us back into the app we're also going to implement uh, delete functionality and if we come to settings and we actually remove the permission for notifications and we head back to our app we're going to reflect that here and then if we tap on that it will take us directly back into the settings and we can allow it and it will reflect that again so this is what we're going to be building so let's get straight into it and I've just created a normal SwiftUI project here and I'm going to create a new file and a Swift UI view, and we're going to call this one notification list view. And this will be our main view that we see here. And in order to interact with our local notifications, retrieving them, deleting them, that kind of thing, we're going to create a class to manage that. So let's create a new file here, a Swift file called notification manager. And this is going to be a final class, notification manager which will be an observable object. And in our notification manager, we're gonna have an at published private set bar notifications. And this is gonna be a type UN notification request, but we need to import user notifications at the top here in order to see this type. And let's set that to an empty array to start with. And if we head back to our notification list, we can add our at state object private var notification manager equals notification manager at the top here and it's an at state object because the list view will own this manager and we can replace the placeholder text here with a list which will contain our notification manager dot notifications and the id is going to be the identifier which is a property on the notification. And for each of these notifications, we're gonna have some text, which will display the notification.content.title. And we'll just set a font weight of semi-bold there. And we'll set a list style on the list of inset grouped list style, like so. And the first thing we want to do when we're dealing with notifications is we need to ask the user for permission. So let's go back to our notification manager here and write our first function, which is going to be reload authorization status. And I'll explain why it's reload in a second. But this is going to use the user notification center dot current dot get notification settings and the completion handler will give us the current authorization state so let's grab the settings and we want to have a property at the top at published private set var authorization status and this is going to be of type UN authorization status and we'll make that optional and we can assign this in a dispatch queue dot main dot async because this get notification settings is not on the main thread and we want to assign the authorization status here to be settings dot authorization status now the reason we are setting this property is because we are going to listen to it on our view and when it changes we're going to react to it and do something. So let's head back to our list view here and you'll see what I mean. So on our list we're going to have an on appear perform manager dot reload authorization status. So when the view first appears we're going to go and check what the current state of that user's permission is. And then we're going to have a modifier here on change of uh, notification manager dot authorization status. We want to do something. 
So let's grab that authorization status and we're going to switch on it. And in the very first instance, the status is going to be not determined. And in this case, we want to request authorization. So let's just put a break in there for now while we handle the other ones. In an authorized state, we want to get the local notifications and display them. And with any other state, we don't actually need to do anything. So we can just say default break. And let's just make that compile. We're adding a break in there as well for now. So when the state is not determined, and this will be the state when the user first uh, opens the app, we want to go and request authorization. So let's come to our manager and let's write a function request authorization. And we're going to be using this notification center again. And we're going to call request authorization. The options are alert, badge, and sound. And in our completion, we're going to be told whether the user granted permission or not. So we can see it with this is granted. And I'm going to ignore the error for now, but feel free to handle it if you want to. I've never actually seen an error from this, but there may be instances where it does occur. So inside here, we have a couple of options. We could call reload authorization status directly, but I don't like the idea that this method is reliant on this one. So what I'm going to do is first of all, dispatch to the main thread here. And I'm going to set the authorization status directly. And this is going to be if they granted permission authorized, and if not, it's going to be denied. And this will trigger that on change modifier that we have in our view. And then the view will decide the correct course of action for that permission state. So let's head back to our list view. And we can actually now call this notification manager dot request authorization when we initially open the app and the state is not determined. And we can remove this break. And we also want to now handle this get local notifications. So let's come back to our notification manager. And let's add another method, func reload local notifications. And again, we're using the notification center. And there's a method on here called get pending notification requests. And we are going to grab the notification that this gives us. And we're going to again make sure we're on the main thread. And we're going to set our notifications here to be whatever this gives us back. And we can now come back to our list view and we can make that call as well. And let's just have a look and see if this is actually working. So let's add a print reload notifications here. And what we want to do is add our notification list view here in our app struct. And we're going to wrap this in a navigation view. And this is going to be our notification list view inside here. And in order to get our title showing, we're going to come under our list style in our notification list view and type navigation title notifications. And now if we run our app, we should be asked for permission. So here's the pop up and we're going to allow it first. And we can see that we made this call to reload our local notifications. We haven't actually created any yet, but now let's delete the app. and say we're not going to allow it. And you can see it doesn't make the call because it hits this default rather than this authorized state. So that's the first part of this app on notifications. 
If you did like it, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And in the next part, we are actually going to set about creating these notifications so we can see them in our list. So do join me for that one, and I'll see you then.